coming to paperback and e-readers from SJS Direct, Isis, House of Isis, the goddess next door takes on a hustling hotep high priestess in Harlem in this Afrocentric Isis series adventure. Pre-order Isis, House of Isis on Amazon.com today. This is going to be part two to my previous video, Life in the Bronx. And in that video, I use my 44 years of life experience living here in the Bronx to explain what life is like here in the Bronx. And in this video, I'm going to talk about some survival tips if you ever come to the Bronx. Now, the Bronx is a really rough place because the Bronx is a borough that is primarily working class and poor people. And a lot of the people here get some sort of public assistance overall. So a lot of the majority of the population is very poor. So you have to understand a lot of people are struggling to get by. And then some others are looking to take advantage of those in order to get ahead or get some money at another person's expense. So a person who comes to the Bronx really has to have their head on a swivel when they come here. You cannot take life for granted here in the Bronx because if you take life for granted here in the Bronx, like some people do in Manhattan below 96th Street, you will not be alive in a few minutes because people will see you being naive and they will target you in some way, shape, or form for a mugging or you will be hustled by one of these dusty people out here like one of these panhandlers or these solicitors out here because here in the Bronx we have a real serious a lot of aggressive panhandlers will be standing outside of bank branches grocery stores check cashing stores and some other types of restaurants fast food restaurants and they'll be standing there looking to hold the door you'll see one of these dusty guys out here and they'll be looking to get money out of people and if you don't know what's going on you will wind up giving money to one of these guys and wind up getting hustled out of your money so you really again have to keep your head on a swivel here in the Bronx because if you're not looking out for yourself other people are looking out for you and they're looking to make you a target also you have to look out for yourself because any sort of situation with someone can turn into a dangerous situation if you do not know how to navigate your emotions because we have a lot of people here some of them are really frustrated because of they can't find employment others are frustrated because they're in a really poor situation and other people are just really angry so you really again you want to watch yourself when you come here to the Bronx it's not a place where you're gonna see a lot of cheery and friendly people like in Manhattan because you have a lot of poor people and you have a lot of people on public assistance and you have a lot of working class people so there's a lot of tension out here and you all have to know how to navigate your emotions in order to deal with situations here in the Bronx because bumping into the wrong person or saying the wrong thing can set somebody off and I've seen this happen on buses quite a bit and this is something you have to really learn discipline and self-control regarding living here in the Bronx and one of the places you have to have discipline and self-control is riding on some of these buses here in the Bronx because when you get on a bus here in the Bronx it's going to be in some cases very tight and very crowded and when you bump into people some people might get a little hot so you have to really be able to stay cool and stay calm and just apologize if you do that and then just keep it moving if you don't you're going to get into it with somebody and there are some people you really don't want to get into it on a bus with because a lot of times people riding the buses here in the Bronx a lot of them are meth heads a lot of them are heroin addicts a lot of them are weed heads and they're riding the bus because many many cases they are illiterate and they cannot really decipher signage and so they use the landmarks as a way to travel so when you get on a that's the way they get on the bus and usually you have to really watch yourself on the bus with them because they can be easily triggered that's why you don't that's why I really try to just avoid the buses in most cases and just walk if it's not that far because if you get on a bus you're gonna have to deal with these type of people in certain bus routes like the Bronx 32 and the Bronx 15 they are notorious 
for drug users traveling on those buses. And oftentimes you're going to see people in the Bronx getting on through the back of the bus and not paying the fare. That's just common. You're going to see some people even hopping the train here. And that's, again, a common thing that goes on here in the Bronx. And again, you just have to pay your fare and be smart because sometimes you don't know if there's an undercover someplace. And you have to really, again, watch yourself when you're here in the Bronx. And you have to really watch yourself when you're traveling here in the Bronx because it's not something you can just take for granted like some people do who live in Manhattan. People in Manhattan, in some cases, they take it for granted, but people in the Bronx don't take it for granted because they know that anything can lead to some trouble happening, especially in the evenings and at night because that's when things can possibly get hot. Sometimes they can get hot during the day, too, if you run into the wrong person, but yeah, you have to really watch yourself in the Bronx. Now, there are some neighborhoods you have to be very, very careful in. There are some neighborhoods like Woodlawn and Riverdale, which are fairly safe, but there are other neighborhoods you really need to really be careful if you come here. Neighborhoods like Tremont. Tremont is no joke. Just don't, just do not fool around over there because it's super rough over there. And some parts of Morrisania are extremely rough. And these areas are not places you don't want to go unless you have to go there or if you live there. You really want to try to make a point to try to avoid some of these areas because these are areas that have gangs in them. Some of them have a lot of big time dope dealers and it's not a place you really want to go in some of these neighborhoods. And even some of these shopping districts which have turned into like 3rd Avenue and 149th Street I talked about how that was once a great shopping district that is a known location for heroin addicts, a known location for meth heads, a known location for weed heads. It's not really a place you want to travel to unless you really have to. I only go down to 3rd Avenue these days, sometimes only if I want to get some Kentucky Fried Chicken. And that's only I go there and then I get right out of there. I get on a bus and I get out of there. I do not go there and, and on the regular because 149th Street is a known location for heroin addicts, it's a known place for meth heads, and it's a place you really want to avoid going to overall. Now Fordham Road is also a really rough place. It used to be one of the grand shopping districts in the Bronx, but it's another place I try to avoid because it has really gotten rough ever since Alexander's closed in 1992. And it's gotten even worse since Sears closed back in about 2009 or so. And the whole place is not a place you really want to go, even if you want to go shopping. If you really want to go shopping in the Bronx, I recommend um, Gateway Center on 149th Street. That's a pretty safe place to go. I mean, it's really far back there, but they have a Target. They have a BJ's. They have quite a few restaurants and it looks like it's patrolled regularly. We have a Bronx 13 bus that goes through there and it can take you right over to Yankee Stadium. That's a pretty somewhat decent area, especially when they have the games on. When they have the games on, you have a lot of cops there and that part is fine. But the other part you really want to try to, you know, if you won't need to go there is around the court, well, not too far from the courthouse. You really want to avoid the areas around the criminal court that's a rough area and you really if you have to go there you can go there and get something that because they have the concourse multiplex there but again it's not it's a really iffy place because again we have social security over there have the criminal court and we have the hra there and that's what makes that area a little rough but by around yankee stadium they always have a lot of cops around yankee stadium so that's a fairly safe area especially when a game is on. When there's a game on, there are so many cops there, you, you will feel safe in that area. That's almost like being in Midtown Manhattan with Yankee Stadium. It's almost like Lower Manhattan, like around the Freedom Tower, because they have so many cops there when there's a game on. And when you're ra traveling in the Bronx, you, you can use the buses, but again, I avoid certain bus routes. Certain bus routes are you desperately need to avoid Bronx 32, I would 
avoid unless I have to go on that. Bronx 15, I would avoid if I desperately need to get on that. I Unless I desperately need to get on it, I'm not taking that. I will take a train or I will walk rather than take those two bus routes because those bus routes have so many dope fiends on them that it makes the, the, the trip almost unten makes the trip untenable to deal with. So I will avoid those bus routes and just walk. And when it comes down to the trains, the trains are fairly decent. You can D train is one of the better ones to ride on. It may take a little while to wait for it, but it can take you wherever you need to go. Four train is way back there on Jerome Avenue and it's a fairly decent train. Now the two and a five, I don't really know that much about it, but they also are here in the Bronx and the six train also is here in the Bronx and I can tell you more about the South Bronx because I live here mostly here for 44 years but there are some other areas that are fairly decent like I know that once you get past Fordham it starts to really get decent in the Bronx when you get into the Kings Bridge, um, Woodlawn, Riverdale those neighborhoods are very very nice and though that's one of the better parts of the Bronx to be in also, the area around maybe the Bronx Zoo is fairly nice. That's a fairly decent area to be in. I heard Parkchester back in the day was a very nice neighborhood at one time. I don't know about it right now. I've been hearing from people saying, telling me that Parkchester has really started to decline because a lot of people there, they left stuff to their kids and their kids aren't taking care of it. And the neighborhood is starting to decline. And then there's the Throgsneck area, which people have said is a fairly decent area. And those areas that I'm talking about, Kingsbridge, Riverdale, um, Throgsneck, those are more, and, and Woodlawn, those are more working class neighborhoods. That's where more of the middle class of the Bronx live. That in the area around Van Cortlandt Park and the One Train. One Train also terminates in the Bronx as well. And those are more working class, middle class areas, whereas the South Bronx is more Poor people, and in those working class and middle class areas, you see a diversity of people. Whereas when you get to the lower parts of the Bronx, you see a larger, more congregation of Latinos because Latinos make up the largest population here in the Bronx. It used to be a large black population. However, a lot of black people again they were they died off during the crack war, either through overdoses or turf wars. And other people who had money, they just packed up and moved to the South and other areas because the crack epidemic drove out a large portion of the black population. But I remember as a kid seeing a large black population and seeing black-owned businesses here in the South Bronx on the regular. But a lot of those people, again, they left due to the crack wars and the crack epidemic of the late 80s early 90s. Now, the Bronx primarily is, again, majority Hispanic with a significant black population and a small white population. And most of the congressmen, the state senators, the councilmen, they're all Democrats, so, and they're Latinos primarily, so that pretty much makes up all the politicians here in the Bronx. There are a few black politicians still in some districts, but it's primarily Latino control and Latinos control a good chunk of the economic base and a complete chunk of the political base. Now there are some Arab owned stores here and there in some neighborhoods, but they usually don't last that long. I've seen several Arab owned stores just go out of business because Hispanics refuse to shop there and they again control a large block of the, blo of the dollars here and they control a lot of the votes so they vote with their wallet and they won't shop at the Arab owned stores and that drives them out of business overall those Arab owned grocery stores they don't last long here in the Bronx but the Latino bodegas they have been here for 25 30 even 40 years and they've been passed on from generation to generation usually in most cases the Latino bodegas are have some of the best selections and they have some of the better food here in the Bronx and they have some of the better prices here in the Bronx. When it comes down to if you want to shop for something like a soda or a snack that's the best place to go because they usually have the freshest merchandise 
and it's always being replenished. Whereas you go to the Arabone store, usually the stuff is stale or the stuff is very old, and in some cases it's moldy because in some cases it's a drug front in some cases. So if you come to the Bronx, you really want to find the Latino bodega, usually run by Puerto Ricans or Dominicans, because that's where you're going to see fresh product and fresh merchandise in the store in most cases. And that's usually where you're going to get your best food. And usually, if you shop here, the prices are going to be a little bit lower than in Manhattan. In Manhattan, the prices are crazy, where you're paying $2.50 or $2 for a 20-ounce soda. Whereas if you go to a Latino bodega here in the Bronx, it's $1.25. And a coffee here is like a dollar in some sense. So if you live in, if you come to the Bronx, you, you can usually save a couple of dollars if you come here, whereas opposed to Manhattan. So you can mm. save significantly if you come here. And there are, when it comes down to shopping in supermarkets, usually the supermarkets are not big chains, they're more local. We have a Key Food, we usually have Associated, we usually have Bravo, and we usually have markets like that as our primary supermarkets. And the selection is fairly decent. And, but you have to really watch what type of meats you buy because sometimes the meats are fairly, sometimes they get, they stay a little long. So you have to really watch what type of meat you buy. Fast food, you can usually get a pretty, there's really some decent pizza shops and Chinese restaurants. So you can get a good, good meal for about seven or eight dollars if you go to one of them. And that that's usually where you can go. But schools, on the other hand, Schools are not that great here in the Bronx. So if you come here thinking that you're going to go to school, the public school, forget about it. Those schools are absolute garbage. And I know this because I had family members work there, and I went there myself. And the public schools back in the 80s, they were very good, and they produced people who were reading above grade level like myself and my family members. But over the last 25, 30 years, they have turned into complete garbage. If you really want to get a good education, you really want to find a nice private school. Schools like at Cardinal Hayes here in the Bronx, those are very good. A lot of the Catholic schools that are that remain, they're very good. And some, only a handful of the charter schools are very good. Charters, I, I'm really iffy on them because some of them are absolute garbage, whereas others are very good. But your best bet is the Catholic schools and the private schools if you want to get an education here in the Bronx because when it comes down to education in those environments they're usually high standards and there's usually a consistency in terms of quality and if you want to survive here you need to have a really good education and you start that by going again to these private Catholic schools or some of these private schools and then you want to go to a college, but you really want to avoid these CUNY colleges that are here, like Bronx Community or this Hostos. Hostos is absolute garbage. It's a garbage college. You really want to avoid that college, and you really want to avoid, you know, Bronx Community. Lehman is a fairly decent school in the CUNY system, but the best schools are Fordham University here in the Bronx and Monroe College. Now, Monroe College is on Fordham Road on the other side of Jerome Avenue, and it's a very good college. It's a college that I went to to get my degree in business, and it's a very, very good college. A lot of people don't know how good it is. It's very underrated, but you can get a very good education there, and it's a very easy environment. I mean, while Fordham Road is a really rough area, the Monroe College environment is a very supportive place, and it's a very clean and safe place and it's a great place to get an education overall. Usually the crowd at Monroe is a little older whereas the crowd at Fordham is a little younger. But if you really want to really delve deep in your subjects you can do that at Monroe. Now there's a Fordham campus and it's a bigger campus on Fordham but I preferred the Monroe campus overall. Um, and it's right next to the four train and the 32 bus goes over there so it's an easier commute if you live in certain neighborhoods with Monroe. With Fordham, they, it's more of a campus where people live there and stuff, and it costs a little more, but it's it's the place you could go if you want to go there. Um, but when it comes down to colleges, you really want to avoid places like your hostos, and you want to avoid Bronx communities. It's just, Those are just garbage colleges. 
it's just a play college overall. You really want to, if you really want to go to school, you go to Fordham, Monroe, and Lehman. Those are solid colleges for a really decent education. And when it comes down to these ele these elementary schools, you really want to go go private. And when it comes down to the junior high schools, the public junior high schools, avoid them at all costs because public junior high schools are a place that breed criminals. There's nothing in a public junior high school but thugs, dope dealers, and gang members, aspiring gang members, and the environment there for education is absolute garbage. I've been there like that ever since I went to IS 148 here in the Bronx, and when it comes down to the public schools, the elementary, junior high school, and high schools, they tend to close a lot. So you can go to a school and it will close overall. And what they do is the Department of Education will close this school, which means it will get rid of all of its staff and hire a new staff and then open it up again. And that can be really frustrating to deal with. Schools that are private and schools that are charter in some cases are usually a bit more stable and the staff is a little bit more stable. So it's easier to get an education in those environments, plus they have higher standards and they don't let in many of the dysfunctional individuals who go to the public schools. So if you really want to get your kids a decent education, the place to go is, a again, a private school, a Catholic school, or some of the higher-end charter schools. But you want to avoid many of these public schools because they are cesspools where there's nothing but chaos and havoc overall here in the Bronx. Now... I'm hoping everyone learned a little bit more about life in the Bronx overall in this second video. And I'm, if, I, if I have to, I may do a part three to this video. But I'm hoping you learn something about life in the Bronx from a long-term Bronx resident. Because I want people to, when they come here, to understand what they need to, to have, do when they come here. And what, how they can best navigate things when they come here to travel. There are certain parts of the Bronx you can come to and they're okay, like Yankee Stadium, the Bronx Zoo, but there are other areas you really need to look out for and understand so that you won't fall into the pitfalls and traps and become a victim of a violent crime or something else happening to you where you run into one of these dusty individuals who are panhandling or something dangerous like that or you wind up buying something from a store and it winds up making you sick. I'm hoping that the information I put in this video helps people, and I'm hoping it gives them a better understanding of life in the Bronx. If you'd like to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box. And if you want to try some of my SJS Direct publications, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.